Hello. So thank you for giving us this opportunity to present ourselves. We are, this is the first time for us in Spain. Um, I'm Iman Del Barek. I'm uh, an obstetrician. I work in Paris in a university hospital called uh, Bourgeon. And I'm also a young researcher in the uh, Université Paris-Cité. And I'm here with uh, Grégoire Jovian, who is a software engineer and data scientist, and also my husband. So we had some very interesting red talking about CDG. And <laughs> we're first going to um, introduce to you our project. which is deep CTG. Uh, it's a large scale analysis of CTG using deep learning. And uh, we also build this uh, website called uh, Genetat Care. And it's built to help us practitioners to improve our skills to integrate the CTG. Okay, let's start. Okay, can you hear me well? Yes, perfect. Yes, so I start with a general presentation of our project DeepCTG. So this is a project which aims at building a system, uh, providing in real time to practitioners and during labor uh, two things. So first, an accurate estimate of the risk of fetal hypoxia, but also, and this is a, a very strong requirement we impose to the like, systems we build from the beginning and from start which is to provide explainable indica indicators able to explain the risk of fetal hypoxia we, we estimate because this is uh, really needed to make sure that the, the like, uh, data and numbers we, yes, we will produce uh, will be actually appropriated by the practitioners who will use it. So where we are now on this project, so we have uh, actually built and evaluated two prediction algorithms on open databases for the moment. So we have used two open databases. The first one is the CTU UHV database that some of you or most of you uh, must know, which is a database with a bit more than 500 cases, whose uh, I think 40 or yeah, 40 have, are cases of severe hypoxia with a pH at birth uh, below 7.05. And the second database we have used is the SPAN17 database with 300 cases. So 100 from Bruno, uh, 100 from Oxford, and 100 from Lyon in France. Uh, and among those 300 cases, uh, 60 uh, are cases of uh, uh, severe fetal hypoxia. And uh, so the two prediction algorithms we have built for the moment are the following. We have started with a relatively simple model, which is like simple logistic regression but fed with features extracted from the CTG signals uh, and based on, on the guidelines that most of you here know so which are based on the baseline accelerations decelerations and the fetal heart rate variability and uh, then the second algorithm we have built is a deep learning alg algorithm uh, where the CTG signals are processed with uh, convolutional layers um, and the table below actually summarizes the preliminary results we get applying those two models on our two uh, databases we work with. So we evaluate all of the algorithms through the area and the curve here in this table. And uh, one very important thing as well is that to evaluate our models on the CTO UHV database, we train them on the uh, other database to make sure that we do not overfit on the data of a specific center. So here to evaluate on CTU UHB, we have removed uh, the Bruno data from the SPAN17 database. And to evaluate on the SPAN17 database, we train on the, the CTU UHB dataset. So we have evaluated our two algorithms, and we also have added the results obtained by Petro et al. in 2019, uh, which, is, which are results obtained with a deep learning model uh, trained on the Oxford database, so with uh, dozens of, several of uh, thousands of uh, cases, and which are actually evaluated on the exact same data sets that we use to evaluate our, our algorithms. 
So we see two interesting conclusions uh, in, in those first results. The first one is that while being trained on very small databases with a few dozens of uh, pathological cases only, we are able to get quite uh, decent performance and quite interesting results when we compare to like state-of-the-art models uh, trained on, on dozens of thousands of cases. And the second thing we notice here as well is that the, the logistic regression performs quite well actually and better than the deep learning model, but we, uh, we think that the deep learning model will get better and better when we will get access to more and more data. And this leads us to uh, the last thing on this project, which are the next steps. So we are now currently, uh, we are now um, actively working with uh, hospitals in France and, and Switzerland, in Paris and Switzerland, to actually build a large-scale multi-centric database to help us uh, continue improve the systems and also make the, all of those evaluations much more robust. And yes, so that's all on the DCTG. So it was a very general overview. We didn't enter at all in the technical details behind the models and algorithms we are building. However, we we'll, like will be very happy to discuss this offline in the in the next few days. So I will now let Iman finish. Okay. So I'll just introduce uh, the the next slide. Okay. <laughs> While we waiting for the, the perfect automized city, we need a substitution and we uh, continue our skills. And, uh, uh, so we just um, Just put some clinical case from the open source, uh, the Prono dataset, and we put it in our website and organize it with two app. The first one is a it's a quiz. So when we open it, we have the, the senior dataset. We have some maternal data, some fetal data. Well, this one is quite easy because the weight we have is not the estimation weight; it's a real weight. So it's some different uh, situation. And, um, and we have this uh, signal <coughs> read and you have to guess what is the fatal outcome. And we choose to put uh, a severe epoxia when the VH is under 7.15 and the normal one is uh, up. So let's try if someone can just see. Let's say it's normal. Oh yes, it was normal. So we, then when we click we have the fatal outcome with the VH and the APCO score. And here are shown also some computers uh, used by our organized uh, um, algorithm that shows the baseline, the destination, and the acceleration. And well, we can do lots of them if you want. And um, the second app is uh, just all the clinical case of uh, CTUHP, and there are sorts of uh, baseline, deceleration, and uh, fetal issue. The baseline and distillation are information that we browse from our algorithm. <coughs> and uh, the fetal issue are the data available on the data set. So we can choose one signal and then it appears uh, we have the, the, the CTG signal, the maternal fetal and the um, fetal outcome. And we can also have the same information that in the quiz. And we will also sort them by the yes, if you want to just show our students how to interpret some reads or to guess a read and help us to improve our skills. So it's just the first um, version of our website. But so we if you click again, if ah, you click sorry. on another one? If you click on another one. Can I love it. I love <laughs> how it shows up. It looks amazing. So it's, uh, it's interesting to just test ourselves and want to show specific uh, anomalies so if you want to have only some uh, minimum baseline and uh, or some maximum baseline you can show it. Do you like this <laughs> So It's free, it's online, I've played with it before. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to improve it with some uh, annotation skills. 
this is the second version that we will come to this one. So this is the original scare and this is the tips and tips. So if you have if you want to share your data <laughs> for another uh, uh, evaluation by external evaluation, we are open and just want to discuss. like this and only if they pass a certain threshold uh, they, they would be uh, given the, the uh, okay to, to uh, dissipate. Uh, is there anything like this foreseen in, in France? Would that, be a, would that be an idea to some of the more standardized training uh, for this? So that's one question. The other part is more formal. Did you have any problems with GDPR data privacy issues for sharing these data in the, in the net? So, um, maybe to start with the second one, as, yeah, can you be okay? As uh, this website is built uh, with uh, like data, uh, public databases, so the data is actually available online, we are just showing it uh, in a more nice way and, and more in, in easy to look way, so I don't think there's any issue. However, I wouldn't do it with a private database, we would have or something like this, and indeed that would uh, wonder uh, how how this would work to, to comply with GDPR. But, yeah. but you're right, it will be an issue if we want to kind of scale this on more databases and more cases. For the first part in France, I think. In France, we're, we're doing the same we're quite late <laughs> uh, because we don't have um, an easy access to data set, but trying to change lots of uh, lots of our lots of uh, facilities in the uh, administration and uh, in uh, jurisprudence are are uncoming. Um, and there's like I, I think that in Spain they have the same problem because we I don't know the, they they Spain. we are looking for. Uh, for tests, some quiz to just train ourselves. It's difficult to train and to improve our skills. We there are lots of uh, no aventa. There are master class on uh, CTG. There are like, lessons in uh, where in, in faculty, but there's no um, continued training. Any other questions? Or while well, you might be thinking of some, I do, I do have a question. Why did you choose? to make it into a website as opposed to making some intranet application. Oh. The, the second step. Next, uh, next step. Okay. Next step okay. we we are we we're thinking about fun. We we're building it right now we we want to do something more interactive and the next step. I feel like we need, uh, for the span lunch. number five, we need a, and, and lunch, yes, that is we always lunch, <laughs> but more to the question here. I feel like we need a presence of regulatory experts in, in, in a meeting, something European, US. I think it would be really cool. It's a, Are we going to pay I mean, them? We will have to pay them. No, they, 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 they would have to pay us. Uh, you organize uh, that. Am I, am I kind of okay? <laughs> no, I, 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 just, I just think it's an important topic because it, it all comes down to this. And so if the discussion is that the genome is easily identifiable, even if it's 
anonymous, okay, but what about the time series? Why is the argument that, why is it so hard? There's no way, okay, you can say that the hard rate can be used to ID people, that, that can be done, but no, it is, there's actual like things that, that, that use that, right? But is this an argument for something like this? So I, I think that it would be really helpful for the research and development and in, in innovation and facilitating the sharing of data if we had this input. Uh, for the jurisdictions that, that we're in. I don't know if you feel like it's a thing to do. Um, speaking of lunch, I will, <laughs> if there's no other questions, <laughs> let's go into the, do you, do you want to post again this thing for the voting? Uh, we, and, uh, I want to thank you guys for this. This is exciting and a great way to